So, from here on out, the only thing you can really do is either change your settings in Windows themselves or upgrade your computer. Uh, one of the things you can do with Windows is like say you use Windows Vista or Windows 7 and it has this cool arrow glass theme. Well, that eats up resources too. Or also any programs that you have running in the background. Some people when their computer boots up they've just got a ton of programs that load like updating software and virus software and you know like AVG or Norton or anything like that. All of this is gonna hog CPU power. So it's up to you to decide what you can afford to turn on and off. And you can either oh my god I got hit. So you can either go to a website, just Google tweaking windows or adjusting windows or anything like that. And uh there's hundreds of websites that show you how to tweak windows and turn on and off services and set different graphic settings but uh, let me go ahead and return my car but one of the other things you can do is there's a couple programs that you can just download that'll do some of this for you one of these is Ad advanced system care and this is an older version there's a new one out I don't particularly like the new one so I use the old one and this lets you do all kinds of different things you know to red fixing your registry and cleaning up files and then system diagnose it has all kinds of stuff you can do in there I have disk defragmenter off because I use a solid state drive and you don't fragment those and then it has utilities and it has all these in here and one of the interesting ones that you can get from this is called game booster this has a turbo boost function in it to begin with and it's configurable and is what it'll do is shut off certain services and programs and free up memory in your computer and you can go ahead and hit turbo boost and see my arrow glass theme is gone now I've you know just looks like Windows 98 or something on me and the other program is a game booster and you can go ahead and switch that into gaming mode and this is configurable too on my computer you're probably not going to notice a huge difference here but, oh well yeah see hard drive is much smoother now even with the video capture on we don't have any kind of a jerkiness it's looking pretty good but my computer, I don't run a lot of stuff in the background anyway. I hardly run anything when my programs or when my computer starts up. So switching to gaming mode, I don't get a huge boost in performance. Other than it changing my graphics settings and stuff. Okay, rather than shoot video of the handling and the frame rates and everything of all the different cores and configurations. I'm just going to list them all at once because the car basically handled the same. You know, there was no real noticeable difference. It just the frame rates are the only things that really changed and they didn't change much. You can see that when we switched into windowed mode, we went to a minimum of 16, a max of 53, and an average of 36 frames per second. When we went into gaming mode, our minimum actually dropped to 14, but it doesn't really mean much. Our max was 59 and our average went up to 37 so we gamed a frame or two per second. I told you there wouldn't be a big huge change in gaming mode for me because of the way I have my computer set up anyway. And this is with a single core 2 gig processor. It's actually a 4 gig processor but I just disabled three of the cores and lowered the rate for it and then when we bump up to a dual core this would be a dual core 2.8 which would be similar to say a AMD 245 or something we went from a minimum of 24 frames to a maximum of 63 to an average of 41 so 
bumped it up a little bit, but one of the things you're going to gain from a dual core is it's going to let you multitask better than what a single core would. So you'll be able to, you know, run programs in the background and have browser windows open and stuff like that, you know, while you have windows running at the same time. You jump up to a quad core, and this would be my AMD quad core at 3.0 gigahertz. We went from a minimum of 23 to a max of 62 and an average of 41, so we didn't change at all by adding an extra two cores and bumping our speed up a little bit. So it, it, it really doesn't always help. It's A computer is a whole system. You, it, it's just like a car. You can't take a car and put a big huge carburetor on it and not change anything else or it's not going to run any better and it might even run worse. It, you have to change everything in the system in order to take advantage of it. But the one thing adding a quad core will do is uh, it, it will let you multitask quite a bit better. You know, it'll it'll run intensive programs a lot better, you know, than what a dual or a single core would. You know, you'll notice stuff like that speed up. Same way with RAM. You don't need a lot of RAM unless you're running really intensive programs or a whole bunch of stuff all at once that's going to use that RAM. SL will will run quite fine on 3 gigs of RAM and, and 4 is plenty. I run a quad core with 4 gigs of RAM and I've never ran out of RAM. I mean, maybe if you're really hardcore into AutoCAD or, you know, video editing or something like that, you might need that. But for the average person, you don't need it. So where we go from here is uh, upgrading video cards. So we'll check on that next.